We're going to get after it. Yay. Welcome to the quarantine team. And it is Saturday morning and uh, we uh, have survived that crazy windstorm that we had yesterday. That was that was pretty, pretty interesting. Um, today we are going to do a Tabata and I'm really, really excited about this Tabata. I'm excited about every Tabata. Um, Josh keeps telling me, he's like, you got to quit doing all these Tabatas on a Saturday. And it's like, no, I really, really like these Tabatas. Um, so we're going to, we're going to have some fun with it. And, um, all you'll need is if you have a weighted object or a couple dumbbells or, or something, um, that would be great because we're going to be doing some curls and some RDLs and some bent rows. Um, so, and of course, a mat would be, would be fantastic for our, our mobi mobility part of the circuit. So, uh, story of the day. Um, this month, we're talking about success and success stories. Um, the past couple stories uh, that I was supposed to tell um, are sports oriented and my brain is just not uh, very sports oriented as far as like all of the statistics and stuff like that is concerned. Um, so uh, I'm gonna skip the, the Michael Jordan story and this um, other story about boxing. And instead, I'm gonna talk about um, a sentence that I read the other day that I've got um, I've gotten a, a, a lot of um, ideas from. And that is, um, action often comes before motivation. And I think that um, like a lot of times we think that we should be motivated to do something um, just because we're supposed to do it. And um, we actually have to take action first before we can feel the effects of motivation. And specifically for me, um, that's come in the form of like meal prep. Um, I have struggled with meal prep. Um, I didn't give myself um, enough credit to be able to do it. I thought it was really complicated and I don't enjoy cooking. I, I feel like I like to bake, but I don't necessarily like to cook. And it was just because I wasn't used to doing the act of meal prep that it was daunting to me. And um, through through um, the pandemic and um, you know obviously not going out to eat as much um, that's really forced me into creating this habit of doing my own meal prep and um, the the more I do it the more comfortable I become with it and the more motivated I am to do more all right and um, that was that was really evident to me the other day when um, I think it was like last Friday night, I decided to go to uh, Brunch Box and get takeout. It's in my building. Um, I used to eat there all the time, especially um, when I would be at the dojo for, you know, from 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. and I was just so hungry and so tired at the end of the day and I just wanted to cram some calories in my face that I would go to, I would go to the Brunch Box so often. And I hadn't been in a long time. And um, so last Friday night I went and I got takeout and I ate it. And afterwards, I felt like crap. And I was really, really happy that I felt like crap because it showed me that the, 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 the food that I am making for my meal prep is, is really clean and it's really whole and it's making me feel really good. And therefore, the act of doing the meal prep has, and the, that feeling that I'm getting from it, that really good feeling, is giving me the motivation to continue with it. So, action often comes before motivation, all right? I think it's the same thing with working out too. You know, it's like sometimes we have to drag ourselves to come to the gym. Sometimes we have to drag ourselves to turn on the, the um, YouTube to do the, to do the workout. Um, but after we do it, we feel so much better than when we started that that becomes the motivation to try to do it again. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into our Saturday workout. It is gonna be fantastic. Guys, let's start on the ground. We are going to do our hip circle. So I'm going to bring my knee to my elbow. I'm going to bring it out to the side, up and back and down. Knee to elbow, out to side, up and back and down. Let's get five nice, big, huge hip circles this way. And then we're going to bring it back the other way. Ugh. Gosh, guys, I don't know, it's so funny. I feel this every day. My hips really, really need this. Five, all right, then we're gonna lift. Let's lift that leg. Keeping that glute activated. Try not to bring that hip over as you lift that leg. 
All right, let's switch it out to the other side. Knee to elbow, out to side, up and back and down. Rotating. Drawing that nice big circle with that knee, keeping that leg at a right angle as we do this. Five, taking it back the other way. Four, five, all right, lifting that leg, two, three, four, five, awesome, all right, let's just go into that Cossack stretch, Woo. bringing that leg, that foot out from your hip, trying to get your butt to touch that heel. Let's do five, four, five, and then we're just going to do our leg lift. Five of those. Ah ha ha ha. Woo! <clears throat> Going back into that Cossack stretch on the other side. Five, leg lift. Feel that glute really activate. Four, five. All right, guys, move this stool out of the way. Then let's go into our shin box. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my knee to my foot. And then what I wanna do is I'm gonna make sure that I keep my chest and back straight I'm gonna lean over into that leg. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing that belly button and I'm pointing it right towards that knee and I'm coming down. I'm gonna hold it here, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, sit it up and switch it out to the other side. All right, so my shin is straight across in front of me, my knee to foot. I'm going to rotate, I'm going to fold it over. Actually, I'm not folding it, I'm just bending over. If I was folding, I would be this way, I'm trying to keep that back straight. I really feel this on the outside of that thigh. All right, let's do one more on each side. Ooh, the subtleties of this stretch are intense. Oh boy. Ha <laughs> ha, awesome. All right guys, let's go ahead, let's get into our cat cow. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lead with my tailbone I'm gonna go into my cat, really extending up out of my thoracic spine, bringing those shoulder blades up to the ceiling. Then I'm gonna start with my tailbone, motivate with my tailbone as I go the opposite way. Really curving that back, bringing the, that head up to the sky, my pelvis up to the sky, my belly button down to the ground. Take it back the other way. If you're ever feeling some lower back pain, just take a break and do these during your day. It's good, good medicine. Uh, let's do one more cat, one more cow. All right, let's go and lay on our sides. We're gonna do our side lying archer. All right, so I want my knees to be stacked. I don't want to have this knee pull back when I reach back, all right? So I'm trying to keep those knees stacked. I'm reaching out in front of me. I'm dragging that hand along my chest as I try to get this top shoulder to touch the ground. And I'm following my hand with my eyes, pausing for a second, and then I'm coming back in. Let's do three on the right, or three on this side, and then three on the other side. 
Get that nice stretch. Ha ha. Woo. Everything's feeling tight today for me, guys. I don't know about you. Ha. Ha. All right. Let's take it to the other side. Stacking those knees, getting those hands to touch, and then dragging that hand along that chest, following that hand with the eyes as I try to get my shoulder down. Yeah, this side is definitely tighter for me. Definitely don't have as much of a range of motion as I do on the other side. Whew. Two, we're gonna do three total. Taking our time with this. Three. Ah, get that nice little stretch at the top. Get that shoulder down, get that shoulder down. All right. Hey guys, so since we're already in this position, let's go ahead and do our bretzel. So we're gonna grab our bottom foot with our top arm. We're gonna grab our top leg with our bottom arm. And then again, try to get that shoulder down to the ground as you're looking away. All right, looking down over that shoulder, trying to get that bottom leg straight off of your body. This one, it's really easy to just do shallow breaths, so try to get as deep of a breath as possible. All right, let's take it to the other side. So I'm grabbing my bottom leg with my top arm, bottom arm, top leg, and then rotating away, trying to look over that shoulder as you're trying to get that shoulder to the ground. Awesome. Great job, guys. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through all of the exercises in the Tabata just to get used to each of them and then we'll go into that circuit. So for our first one, we're gonna do, I'm gonna give you some variations on the inchworm, all right? So for our, for our regular inchworm, we're gonna widen out our legs because we wanna keep our legs straight at the top. We're gonna go into this um, nice hamstring stretch. We're gonna walk it out, come into this high plank, making sure my butt is even with my shoulders, come back in. Go ahead and give me five of those and then I'm gonna give you the variations on it. So this is part of our warm up. <laughs> Three. Get that nice stretch here. Making sure to get those shoulders over those wrists. And five. All right. So for my next version of this, you can call this like a single leg inchworm or we could call it a single leg walkout, whatever. So I'm going to come down to the ground. I'm going to lift one of my legs. I'm going to walk it out, come into this high plank, and then I'm going to walk it back in. All right. I'm going to walk it out. I'm going to walk it back in. Now I can always stand up at the top, come back down and do that. That's another variation of it. Oops. Give me five of those on the right. And then give me five on the other side. Whew. Working on my balance with this especially as I stand up. Taking it slow. All right, I think this is my fifth one. I'm gonna give you one more progression with this. 
And if you, if you choose to not do this progression, that's okay. I want you to go back to your regular inchworms or however you're going to do it. If you're just going to do a single leg walkout, if you're going to do um, just the regular inchworm. So this one, I'm going to come down with that single leg. I'm going to walk it out into that high plank. I'm going to come back in and then I'm going to pop it up at the top. So I'm going to hop on that leg, coming back down, coming back in, hop it up. Go ahead and just give me three if you're doing those on the right. And then switch it out to the other side. Those are a burner, guys. Woo! Locking it back in, hopping it up at the top. This is a bit of a power move. Yeah! All right. So that's a whole bunch of variations on the, on the inchworm that you can do during the Tabata. Maybe you start off with the regular inchworm. Maybe the next time you hit it, you try the progression of the single leg walkout and then add the hop, however you want to do it. All right, and then we're going to do penguins. So I'm on the ground, my feet are in close to my butt, getting those shoulder blades off the ground. I'm going to reach down as far as I can down that shoe, and then I'm going to go to the other side. Go ahead and give me 10 as far as our warm-up is concerned. So 10 on each side. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right. Oh, I should have stayed on the ground because our next exercise is our knee grab. So let's go ahead and do 10 knee grabs. I start with my hands at my chest, legs are extended out, come in, putting those feet flat on the ground, coming back down, just touching my shoulder blades to the ground. Go ahead and give me 10 of those. Four, five, Six, seven, eight, use those shins, nine, and 10. All right, then we have our glute bridge press. So guys, if you have dumbbells or a kettlebell or some sort of weight, fantastic. If you don't, then you can just do this without weight or you can use a book or something, all right? So I'm going to go into this glute bridge position where my feet are in close to my, my um, butt. And then I'm going to lift my hips up into the air. And I'm going to take my dumbbells at about a 45 degree angle from my body. I'm going to press up, really squeezing my shoulder blades at the top and coming back down. So my hips stay up the entire time. And then the range of motion is limited by my triceps hitting the floor. And that's OK, all right? So we're pressing up, but you're really squeezing those shoulder blades, keeping those lats super active as you do this, keeping those glutes on. All right, give me 10 of those. Seven, eight, nine, and 10. So guys, when you're doing those presses, we want to keep our elbows in tight to our bodies or at a 45. Don't bring those elbows out, all right? So then my hands are at about a 45 degree angle as I push forward and back in, really keeping these lats and those shoulder blades pulled together, all right? So then we're going to go into our squats. So if you want to use a weight for your squat, fantastic. If you don't have weight, Maybe you do a prisoner squat where you're putting your hand behind your back, behind your head. Or if you want to make this a little bit harder, you can grab two dumbbells. All right, I'm gonna hold one of my dumbbells in a goblet position. My feet are wide in order to make room for my hips. Toes pointed out, bringing those elbows down to those knees, hitting that depth. As always guys, depth before dishonor, get that depth, all right? Try to keep your torso as upright as your body will allow. Some people's femurs are super long and it pushes them a little forward. 
that's okay. Just consciously think about staying upright. Give me 10 of these. Eight, nine, and 10. Yeah. Then we're gonna go into our curls. And Sarah, I am so glad I have these 10 pound weights right now. <laughs> I was trying 15s the other day and whew, it was hard. All right, going into my curls. Squeezing those glutes, guys. Give me 10 of these. Again, if you have a kettlebell, totally do a kettlebell curl. I want full extension at the bottom of those arms. Don't give me a three quarter curl. All the way down, all the way up. Six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Nice. Now, while I have my weights, I'm just gonna go right into my RDLs. So for my RDL, a Romanian deadlift, that's the top half of a deadlift, what I'm doing is my feet are on the narrow side. I am bending over, so I'm hinging at my hip right here. Coming over, I am not losing my lats. I'm not curving my back. I'm keeping my lats engaged. I'm coming down, bringing the weights or the kettlebell down below my knees, coming back up with force, all right? So bending over, bringing my butt to that back wall, coming up, bringing that pelvis forward with force, squeezing those glutes at the top. Go ahead and give me 10 of those. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Awesome. Now we're gonna do our tricep overhead press. So if you wanna make this harder, you can use two dumbbells. All right, putting them together, coming back. I'm getting a really nice stretch at the back here and then coming up, coming back. All right, and if that is too heavy, you can grab your goblet like this, like nested in your, in your uh, thumb and pointer finger, come up overhead. And I'm keeping my elbows in tight to my head, guys. As I do this, go ahead and give me 10 of those. My feet are narrower and my butt is squeezing, squeezy squeezies. Get that full extension of those arms as you lock out those elbows at the top. Nine and 10. All right, next we have our bent rows. It's convenient, they already have my dumbbells, yay! So what I'm gonna do is narrow up those feet, squeeze those glutes at the top, come over into that hinge position, pull those weights back to my hips, right? Keeping those elbows in on the tighter side, keeping that back flat. Go ahead and give me 10 bent rows. You should feel this in your hamstrings. You might need to play with the bending your knee in order to feel that hamstring activation. Everybody's legs are a little different, so that's why everybody's bending their knee is a little different. Mine's pretty straight. And I can still really feel that hamstring tension. Nine, 10. All right, we can put those down. And then we are gonna go into our plank march. So I'm going into my plank. My butt is about the same level as my shoulders raising one leg up and then down, raising the other leg up and down. Feel this in that glute, guys, all right? Don't bash those toes into the ground. We're being very, very gentle with that step and we're widening out our feet enough in order to keep those hips stable. So we're not going side to side with this. We're trying to keep those hips level as we do this, all right? 10 on each side. Eight, nine, nine, ten, ten. Woo! Awesome! All right. We are going to take a little bit of rest. We're going to grab some water and then we're going to go into our Tabata. Ah. All right, so for our Tabata, 
It's going to be 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest for four minutes. We're going to be doing two exercises. The first two exercises are either the inchworm or the single leg walkout. You can add the hop in if you want to be a superhero. And then we're going to go into our penguins. So we're going to take those two exercises back and forth for four minutes, okay? So, getting ready to go. And we're going to start in three, two, one, go. I'm just going to start with the inchworm just to make sure that you see that demo. All right. If you're doing your single leg walkout, remember which leg you started with so you can switch it up the next time we hit that in the Tabata. All right. Now I'm going into my penguins. So I'm on the ground, feeding close to my butt, getting those shoulder blades off the ground, and I'm going, reaching down the sides of those shoes, really feeling that contraction in the obliques, guys. We've got about four seconds left. All right, now I'm gonna try those single leg walkouts with the hop. You can continue to do your inchworms. And I'm going, oops, single leg, walking back in, doing my hop. Walking it out, coming back in, doing my hop. Whew, yeah, feel the power guys. All right, switching it out to my penguins. Yay! We're going in three, two, one. Hit it. Yeah, guys, really put that thought, that conscious energy into thinking about those obliques, okay? So you're crunching on the one side as you're extending on the other. Get as full of a range of motion as you can as you get those shoulder blades off the ground. All right, switching it back out and make sure I use my other leg for my single leg walkout this time. And we're going. Hopping it. Ha. Coming into this high plank, coming back in. Woo. Got about seven, oh, got it. Going into my penguins. Having a hard time seeing through these very long bangs since I haven't had my hair done in a very long time. All right, guys, whoo, get those penguins on. You do these right, man, they are hard. Three, two, one. All right, guys. So this is our last set of each exercise. Last set. set. Thank you, Coach Josh. Going back into it. Again, you can just do the walkout without the hop. I'm adding the hop in because it's fun. All right, going into my penguins. Woo, we got this. And we're going. Really reach, really crunch, really stretch that opposite side. You got this. Got about five seconds left. Three, two, one. Yeah, yo. ha ha. All right, guys, I'm gonna rest for about 90 seconds. I'm gonna grab some water. I'll talk you through the next two exercises for our Tabata. All right. Okay, so for our next two exercises, we have our knee grabs. 
as you all know and love, with our arms in close to our bodies. Coming up, grab the shins, coming back down. Use those shins, just come to those shoulder blades. You do not have to extend your head to the ground. All right, we got those. And then we have our glute bridge press. So we're staying on the ground with this. My knees come in tight to my butt. My arms are in, my elbows are in tight to my uh, body. Hands are at about a 45 degree angle, pressing up and down. Oops, getting those glutes up, sorry. There we go. Pressing up and down. Really squeezing those glutes, guys, as we're doing this. All right, so those are our two exercises. We'll rest for about 10 more seconds, then we're gonna get into it. All right, we are starting in, I can see the timer this way, three, two, one, hit it. Knee grabs. You can go faster than me, you can go slower than me. This is your 20 seconds to do as much work as you want. All right, two, one. All right, get set up for your glute bridge press. Three, two, one. Squeeze those glutes. Pressing. Again, that range of motion is gonna be limited by the ground. That is fine. Just make sure you're not clanking those dumbbells together. Keep a distance. Like pretend like there's a balloon. Actually, yeah. All right, now we're going back into our knee grabs again. All right, in about two seconds. Ha ha. I'm gonna try to pick up my pace each time. That's just me, that's how I'm doing this. You can take an even pace with it the whole time. And we're switching it back out to our presses. All right, down a little bit. Glutes up, hips up. Guys, also pretend like you have a balloon in between your knees. So you're squeezing your glutes and you're squeezing your knees on that balloon. Full extension. Squeezing the shoulder blades at the back. Go back to my knee grabs. Three, two, one. Got this. 
and about weights that feel heavy, guys. You can be tired. Just don't act tired. Keep it strong. Keep it strong. Again, if you get really gassed, release the bodice. Always. One. Two. Take a little bit of a longer rest. That's okay. Three. Two. One.
Okay, guys, keep those elbows in tight to my head. Don't have those elbows flare. Uh, two, one. Let go. And my plank march for my last set of Tabatas. We're going to take our rest. Getting our water. So, my bent rows. In that hinge position, holding those dumbbells. Back. Pocket. As if I'm putting on heavy pants. And then I'm going to go into my plank march. Where I am. Down on the ground. On my forearms. Shoulders are over. My elbows. My feet are out wide for hip stability. Lifting that leg up and coming down. Lifting the other leg up and coming down. Feeling that in that glute, guys. Don't smash those toes into the ground with it. Be really, really gentle with those feet. All right, we got about 20 seconds to warm rest. And then we're going into it. We got a little bit more water. All right. Guys, we're going to start again here in three, two, one. Start with those bent rows. Bent rows, all right? So if you just have a kettlebell, you grab your kettlebell, same exact thing, all right? Your arms are going to get a little bit more narrow. That is okay. Squeeze. Ah. Leg rows. 
This is success month. That was a success. Great job, guys. Super proud of you. So we were talking, there's a story for the day about how action often comes before motivation. Think about what in your life you're having a hard time motivating with. And see if you can just take a quick five minute action with that one thing and see if that makes you feel more comfortable doing it and uh, gets you that feeling of motivation, that feeling of satisfaction, or that feeling of desire to want to go and do it again, all right? So, we are here at Training for Warriors Portland to help you bring forth the warrior within, big hugs, and love. Meow, meow, meow. Unmuting. I bought my mom a Mother's Day card like a month ago, 
because I was like, oh my God, the stores are going to totally run out of Mother's Day cards, so I better grab this now. And I should have just sent it then. And then, of course, I left it in a drawer and forgot about it until like yesterday. And I'm like, ah, crap, now she's not going to get it in time. <laughs> it was like the one time that I was actually proactive with the card. So, 